We've addressed several different aspects of garden design throughout this season. Now it's time to look back at our plans and start to create some gardens. Keeping in mind, of course, the principles and elements of designs that we've been discussing. As gardeners, we tend to think of plants first and design as something of an afterthought. But to create a truly harmonious landscape, we need to think in the other direction, starting at the landscape level and working our way down to plant selection. So let's take a look back at our landscape plans that we created earlier. On it, we've identified several areas that need plantings, whether it's for privacy or to create garden rooms or simply just to add beauty to the landscape. Knowing where we need these plantings is a great start. Now we just need to identify what types of plantings are needed. Plantings typically fall into one of four categories. These include beds, borders, islands, and foundations. Let's start by looking at garden beds. Planting beds are often placed at the edge of a lawn or nestled up against a patio, a building, or a walkway. A lot of times they're raised and edged, and this does a couple of things. It separates the garden from the, its surroundings, and when the bed is raised, it, it provides the opportunity to add soil and create a richer planting base. Now, a planting bed is meant to be viewed from all sides, and so as you arrange plants, you want to consider how it looks from different angles. They're also meant to be viewed up close, and this provides the opportunity for detail in this kind of bed. The size should be proportionate to its surroundings, but you don't want too narrow of a bed because they're very difficult to plant without things spilling over into walkways. And uh, because they tend to be near homes or along high traffic areas, you want to think about season-long interest and incorporate plants that might have structural interest during the winter or perhaps uh, evergreen foliage. The shape of the planting bed should match the surrounding landscape linear in a formal design, and curvilinear in a more informal setting. Another type of planting bed is the island. An island, like the name suggests, floats in a sea of lawn. It's freestanding without any backdrop, and they're often mounded in the middle. An island is used to break up a large expanse of lawn, and they should be sized accordingly, larger in a large landscape and smaller in a more moderately sized landscape. The, the line should be sweeping and curvilinear to give it a more natural look. You want to avoid tight circles, which look very unnatural. You also want to avoid uh, tight curves or um, geometric shapes, which can be difficult to maintain and distract the eye. Now, like our planting bed, the island's meant to be viewed from all sides, and so it should be planted accordingly with our larger plants in the center and then stepping down to more progressively smaller plants as we move to the edge. But you also want it to look natural, so you need to break it up a little by using different sized plants and sometimes throwing a taller plant closer to the edge. One last thing to consider is to maintain a nice balance throughout the entire length of the bed. This is an example of a border. Borders are typically very long plantings that are set against a backdrop, such as a wall or trellis or a hedge. They're often used at the edge of the yard or along a very long driveway. The shape of the border should fit the landscape. Rectangular borders only work in very formal settings. More typically, you use sweeping curved lines that undulate around garden features. For example, our border follows the drip line of this aristocratic pear down here. Borders are meant to be viewed from one side and often from a distance. And so you want to use large masses of color by grouping plants in numbers of 7, 9, or 11 to create nice big clumps. The width of the border should be proportionate to the entire yard, but as a general rule of thumb, it should never be more than one quarter the width of the entire yard. Now for a very wide border, you might want to incorporate a small path that goes into it so that you could get inside and maintain the plants. Another good idea is to leave empty space at the back of the border, 
which you don't see from outside, but what it does is allow for good air circulation back here. And that reduces some disease problems with our plants, and it also creates a space for you to get in here and maintain the plants. The final type of planting is the foundation planting. This type of planting was traditionally used to hide the raised foundations at the base of a building. Today's homes, of course, don't have much visible foundation, but foundation plantings can still be useful. They can break up the hard lines of a building and also break up uh, a long facade. This is especially important on a, a large home with a long unbroken wall. Throwing a tall shrub or a small tree in there can really add a lot of visual interest. Uh, foundation plantings can also add some insulation and help reduce your heating and cooling costs. Now we can break away from the traditional all evergreen style of foundations and throw in some perennials and some deciduous shrubs. Perhaps think of the foundation more as the backdrop for a mixed bed. But because these gardens are going to be right up next to your house and viewed all the time, you do want to include plenty of evergreen material. Considering these different types of plantings, we want to return to our landscape plan and start to refine it by adding some, some more different types of plantings. Um, for example, we probably want a nice long border on this edge of the landscape. Um, there's definite need for a foundation up in the front, and this large lawn area can be broken up with a nice island bed. So you want to take your plants and think about these different types of gardens and how they each can work in your own landscape.